All right, we're gonna get started. If you feel anything painful, let me know. I'll give you more numbing medication, okay? Okay. The pressure is normal. Okay, come a little bit closer. So we are removing a port today in the office. Our patient is wide awake underneath the towels here. She is clearly aware that a small portion of her tattoo is showing, but she's okay and um, allows me to share her story of being a breast cancer survivor. So she had right breast cancer, which is why her port's on the left side, because when we do breast cancer surgery, we remove the tumor and we sample and lift nodes from the armpit um, to help stage with the cancer and you know dictate treatment. And if we put a central line on the same side as the lymph node uh, excision area, that increases her risk of lymphedema. So for breast cancer, we go on the opposite side. So again, breast cancer was on the right side. She's already had her treatment. Her port was on the left side because it's the surgeon who placed it did the appropriate spot. Um, so now she has successfully beat her cancer and she is here for the port removal. So congratulations to her. And thank you for allowing us to do the live stream with us. So I've already injected this. Her, her head is up here, feet are down there. Uh, this is underneath the left clavicle. So I've already injected the numbing medication uh, a few minutes ago. So we're just going to give her a little bit extra just to make sure before we get started. Do you feel that? Yes. Is it painful? No. No? Okay, good. Right. Let me know if there are any uh, good questions for me okay. to answer. So this fluid that we're seeing here is just the local anesthetic that I injected. Doing okay? Yes. No pain? No pain. Good. We're almost done. You're doing great. Well, almost done with the removing the port aspect. We still have to sew it up. So we're going to dissect down until we find the the port and the catheter where that attaches. So I like to find that. There is a usually a thick scar capsule that has formed around this foreign body because again, that's the body's way of protecting itself from foreign invaders. Doesn't know that the port is, is trying to help, but there's the, the little flying saucer thing is the port. Um, she doesn't need the neck. This is a subclavian. She doesn't okay. need the neck. So this is a scar capsule, the, the thing that formed around the port. So I am identifying the where the port goes into the catheter, which is right there. So I find a little hub. And I'll scrape a little of that scar tissue away. And then we are going to remove. So this is the part where I don't want you to shout or take any deep breaths for the next couple minutes. So I secure the port, the catheter, the catheter slides right out. So that's the catheter tip. It looks kind of short, but it did its job. This was a subclavian Part. Her surgeon opted for that approach. Um, we've talked about that I like to prefer the inter internal jugular approach, but it still worked. So now uh, we're almost done. So I just got to remove the, the stitches that are anchoring the port down to the fascia. So there's usually three. There's one. There's another one. And if you cut right on the port itself, it's a safe dissection. So. But this is all just scar tissue that's stuck to. There's a third one right there. So this is the port. It's completely removed. Again, this is, looks kind of short. So this, the tip is supposed to go down towards the SVC right atrial junction, but 
it probably just stayed right there. So this is completely removed. She wants to take a picture of it when we're done, so I'll leave it off to the side. And then we're going to, I like to remove this scar capsule. You can see how it forms like a little cyst wall. It's not really a cyst, it's just scar. So I like to take some extra time to remove that because fluid can accumulate in there and cause a seroma that is, takes a long time for it to go away if it ever does. So um, sometimes surgeons, some other surgeons don't, they just leave it alone for whatever reason, maybe just to hurry up and be done. But um, I don't like when patients have a little persistent fluid pocket. So I take a little bit extra time to remove the scar capsule. that says, what is the port used for and why is it inserted? A port is a central line that is completely underneath the skin and it can be used for anything, but anything that requires IV, like long-term IV and repetitive IVs, but mainly for chemotherapy patients. So obviously for her, for her breast cancer treatment. I also like to close up the, the opening to where the catheter was tunneling underneath the skin. That's what I'm doing right now. Just a little another extra step. As you can see, she's tolerating the procedure extremely well, which is why we remove them here in the office under local anesthetic. I was just closing up that tunnel. Yeah, remove any other extra scar capsule. And then we'll close up the incision. Doing okay? Oh, I'm fine. Great. Doing fantastic. That's just part of the scar capsule there. All right, looks like most of it's been removed. So we're gonna give you some numbing medication, a little bit extra just to make sure before we start 
closing up the incision. Mm -hmm. So you might feel that. That's the numbing medication. Mm -hmm. Shoving that gauze for tamponade and the oozing as I prepare myself to get ready for the final closure. She has no restrictions. She can do whatever she wants later today. Obviously, you know, you're probably not going to be doing jumping jacks, but I would probably recommend not doing any jumping jacks for, for today. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to close the skin. I'm going to do a deep dermal layer. This is a 3 0 Vicro on the RB1 suture. So it's dissolvable. Feel some tugging and pulling as I put the stitches in, but we're almost done. Okay. When you go home over the next couple days, you might notice some bruising. That's completely normal and expected, so don't freak out if you see that. And then bruising is just blood, so it can track down, it can kind of run down your chest with gravity, so that's also normal and expected. Um, it'll get better on its own. Can you get some glue? So that's the deep dermal layer, and now we're going to do the final subcuticular layer. I like to start the suture at the corner, anchor the knot like I just did, and then throw the same, same throw to bury the knot. Take small bites at the beginning of the closure. So the first two are pretty small bites, just so it doesn't dog t dog ear the corner. And then after that, I take larger bites until we get to the other corner, and then we get to take smaller bites again.
I like to pull it as I go to make sure it's watertight. And you want to go directly across whenever you go on your next stitch. Doing okay? Oh, yeah. At the corner, at the very end, I like to just keep it loose the last couple stitches so I can see. Because if you pull it too tight, the incision doesn't open up. Incision, I kind of just squeeze out any excess fluid if there is any. And then do the Aberdeen nut. I think that's what it's called. And then I bury the final nut by going down underneath the skin. And that's it. And then we put this um, exofen surgical glue on there. This gives it a watertight seal. Usually I don't do it for Ports because I usually only take the time to do the subcuticular closure when I put an implant in, like a hernia mesh, or actually placing the port itself. But since she was so nice to let us do all this stuff and share her story, we are going. I did the nice closure for her. So that's it. So the glue is going to be on there. It's going to take a couple minutes for it to dry up, and then you'll be good to go. All right. You did great. Thank you.